When you look at how the All Blacks defend, the first thing to notice is how quickly they realign to shut down opportunities for attacking teams. Let's start by looking at a sequence of plays from the Wallabies. On this first phase play from a line-out, they'll punch into midfield with the first phase. You'll see as we cut to a wider shot that the Wallaby forwards have got around the corner nicely and are offering FIPS and running options, but the All Blacks have got their defence set as well. By realigning so quickly, they're easily able to shut down the Wallaby's second phase. But as the shot widens out for the third phase, the All Blacks have come around the corner so well that they've got six defenders against three Wallaby attackers, which makes it easy for them to overpower the Wallabies, and it's a turnover from this ruck. That's only achieved by players working hard off the ball to realign quickly. Now because the All Blacks are so good at realigning quickly, you have to take every opportunity you've given. So let's have a look here at how the Wallabies dealt with it from a turnover ball. First phase, Hooper's tackled. Second phase, the ball goes wide. And you can see in this case, the All Blacks are actually short on this near side. Tapawai is faced with a decision whether to run and take advantage of the space, or to kick as the Wallabies normally do. He takes the run option, and the Wallabies make good metres. On this next phase following up, you can see that the All Blacks defensive line on the far side of the ruck and out into midfield is pretty disorganised. That's where the opportunity exists, and the Wallabies have got players out there to take advantage of the opportunity. But they don't recognise the opportunity, instead go for another midfield punch, which gives the All Blacks time to realign, and you can see when we cut out to a wider shot, they've matched up the numbers that the Wallabies had on the far side. Here's another opportunity for the Wallabies, which comes as a result of a pretty poor kick chase from the All Blacks. The ball's received on the right-hand side of the field, and quickly moved down into midfield. Now at this point, Kirtley Beale's got a choice to make. He's got two supporters outside him and room down the touchline. Simply take the ball to the line and then pass the ball using the support. Instead, Kirtley takes the riskier option, puts a grubber kick in for himself, and the All Blacks recover. You just can't afford to waste opportunities like that because the All Blacks don't give you too many. One possible area to attack with the All Blacks is their defensive first phase. Whilst many people say you can't score tries from first phase opportunities in international rugby, the evidence doesn't support that. Here's a good example when Argentina played the All Blacks in the Rugby Championship this year. After a well-constructed decoy move from the line-out, on the next phase, the Argentinians cross for a try that came from inside their own half. Here's an example from the Springboks against the All Blacks this year, again from around the halfway mark, again from a first phase move off a line-out, and again straight through the midfield for Brian Habana to cross for a good try. Here's another example from the Springboks earlier this year, targeting the end of line out defence of the All Blacks. A much simpler move, same result, try to Banner. And here's an example from England's recent win over the All Blacks at Twickenham. There's no complicated move here, but England maintain their width really well, which puts the All Black defence in two minds, and then good pace on the inside leads to a good break. It's harder to find recent examples of the Wallabies using first phase to break down the All Blacks defence, but here's their effort from Hong Kong in 2010. No fancy moves, just three runners in midfield, and Cooper picked out Ashley Cooper as the correct runner, and straight through midfield for a good try, again from inside the Wallabies half. You can score against the All Blacks on first phase, but you've got to be prepared to try. You might have noticed that Ashley Cooper went straight through the channel between Carter and Nonu in that play. And it's something that happens more often than you might imagine. Here's an example from the Tri-Nations final in 2011. Carter's rushed out of the line and Nonu's held back, which creates a gap outside of Carter and inside Nonu for Samo. And here's an example from the All Blacks' recent loss against England at Twickenham. This time it's Tuolagi that'll target that channel between Carter and Nonu. Nonu's looking outside, which leaves Tuolagi to be taken by Carter, and it's a bad miss, but again, straight through that channel. In reality, there are very few weaknesses in the All Blacks' defence, so for me it's more about what the Wallabies should be doing to place pressure on that defence. That's what I'll cover in the second part of the video.